Whether you work in the food industry or just a casual diner, surely you follow the news when a foodborne illness outbreak occurs. Whether it's the recent E. coli concerns with romaine lettuce, or if it was the large egg recall that happened in April 2018, you certainly see these news stories. Beyond the foodborne illness side of things, there's also the food provenance side, meaning do I trust the food source and is what the food producer is telling me is correct, is it actually true? The end-to-end -end food value chain encompasses a complex global network of participants all the way from the farmer to the end consumer. And at each handoff, the individual item is affected by that participant in some way. Uh, each participant keeps records of what they've done, so what they received, how they performed any processing, and what was handed off to the next participant. This complex network uh, creates several challenges uh, that can be overcome with blockchain. So first, foodborne illness, it is a major problem. One out of six Americans get sick annually, which amounts to 48 million people. The World Health Organization estimates that 420,000 people die each year of foodborne illnesses, and 30% of these deaths are children under the age of five. If you recall the large spinach recall that occurred back in 2006, California farmers alone uh, were impacted to the tune of $74 million in losses because of all of this product needing to be destroyed. The reason, they didn't know where the actual problem was. More and more, consumers demand quality in the food that they eat. 44% of customers, according to the Food Marketing Institute, want to know that their food has been produced ethically. Yet 75% of customers don't trust what's listed on the food labels. So customers demand for quality and transparency currently isn't being satisfied. And lastly, through this complex network of the food value chain, the records of that food's journey are poorly managed. 15% of the US food supply is imported, yet the FDA only requires each participant in the food supply chain to have visibility to one up, one down, meaning they just have to simply keep records of what they received and where it went. In effect, no one has full end-to-end -end visibility to this end-to-end -end journey. So in times of crisis with a foodborne illness or to substantiate the integrity of a food product, it's very difficult to pull together the end-to-end -to -end set of records describing that food product's journey. There are several ways blockchain could improve those challenges the food industry is facing. First, participants could better monetize their production. Farmers could generate more sales uh, through increased land use and distribution of their end of season overflow. Producers could also increase their selling price if they follow more costly, sustainable, ethical practices by being able to prove the integrity of the claims uh, that they're making. Next, food recalls could be targeted more quickly instead of blanketed. Imagine if we were able to identify not only the farm but the particular field within a farm where an infected product came from. Instead of simply saying, all spinach must be taken off of all shelves, or don't eat romaine lettuce from Yuma, Arizona, when none of the product is labeled that it's from Yuma, Arizona. Through smart contracts, handling the exchange digitally of assets that are physically exchanged could disintermediate all of the handoffs and the middlemen that exist within the food value chain today. So only those participants who are truly adding value to that food product would participate. And this would save time and cost for every participant, including you as the consumer. Because of the blockchain's transparent nature, collaboration would become more open and transparent, and that ultimately drives trust in the consumer. 